Hey guys, this is Austin, and this is the Google Stadia Founders Edition. So Google were awesome enough to sponsor this video so I can take a look at what should be the best cloud gaming service yet. So at first I thought that they had custom printed the box, but actually I just think someone wrote my name on it and they just have really, really good handwriting. Like, I gotta respect that. <laughs> So there are a bunch of different versions of Stadia, but this is the brand new Founders Edition, which I believe is sold out right now. But inside, we get pretty much everything we need to get up and running, and starting with the controller itself. Now, even though the Founders Edition is sold out, you can still buy the Premier Edition, which is pretty much the same, but with a white controller and no buddy pass. Now, you can also buy controllers outside of the bundle for $69 each, and they come in white, black, and a greenish color called Wasabi. So it's kind of like a mix between like an Xbox and like a PS4 controller. What I like is the actual feel in the hand. Like the, the grips are a little bit longer than on a standard controller, but at least for my hands, that fits pretty well. Sticks feel good. Nice little bit of clickiness. Uh, I feel like I'd like a little bit more tension on the triggers, but Generally speaking, it actually feels like a pretty premium controller. Now you might be wondering why exactly I'm unboxing a controller as well as a Chromecast Ultra. I mean, this doesn't look like a game console. However, through the power of cloud gaming, it actually can be. So with Google Stadia, essentially the game itself is actually running on a server who knows how many miles away and is being streamed to your device. But it also will work on the Chrome browser on your computer, it'll work on some phones and tablets and stuff. Essentially, pretty much as long as you have a good internet connection, theoretically you should be able to play games pretty much anywhere you are. This is a little side note, but you should definitely use the power adapter that comes in the box. So while some Chromecasts, like the normal versions, you can power off of the USB port from your TV, the difference here is that this power adapter has an ethernet jack, and when it comes to cloud gaming, while you can use Wi-Fi, and at the very least you should be using five gigahertz Wi-Fi, but realistically, if you can plug it into ethernet, you're going to get a smoother, better experience. Now, I've used a lot of cloud gaming services over the years, and most of the early ones were barely usable, these days, there are a couple which have gotten better, but none of them have the full might of Google behind it. So the setup process should be pretty straightforward, especially if you already have a Chromecast. So to start out with, I'm using a Pixel 4 because this is one of the phones which is supported to stream. I need to just unlock my invite code with Stadia, which I have somewhere. I now have the name Austin on Stadia. So on my phone with Stadia Pro, I've been able to unlock a couple of games that are included, including Destiny as well as Samurai Showdown. So the next step is to get my Chromecast up as well as the controller. Oh, excellent, okay. Do you wanna set up your Stadia controller? Sweet, so it already sees that I have a controller. Yes, I would love to do that. So now I'm going to connect the controller to the Wi-Fi. The idea is that this controller, as opposed to being directly connected to the device, can be connected to my Wi-Fi, which means that say I'm playing on the Chromecast and I want to switch over to say playing on my phone, I don't have to switch devices because this isn't connected to my actual phone or my actual Chromecast. It's connected to the cloud, which means that everything should just work. Theoretically at least. Let's see if it, uh, see if it actually does. All right, so if I press left, X, Y, oh, wait. <clears throat> if I can press left XXB, like it says on the screen, I'll be fine. <laughs> it looked like a Y, okay? It looked like a Y. Yes, okay, cool. Sweet, okay. So we're done with the phone for now until we're actually ready to play some games. Now let's uh, jump into my account and see what happens. What is, uh, what does Stadia's interface look like? It looks like that. Okay, cool. So we have my games, which is just the two games that are included. But if I want, I could also go to the mobile app and I can actually download and buy more. Oh yeah, so they have quite a few games. So they also have pretty decent discounts. So if I want to play like Mortal Kombat, it's $20 off, 30 bucks off Assassin's Creed, Metro Exodus for 20. That's actually not bad. So coming next year, there will be a Stadia base version and that will have no monthly subscription and you'll just buy the games as you want them. Now you are limited to 1080p streaming there. However, for a lot of people, especially if you're playing on like your phone or on a computer or something, 1080p is probably going to be totally fine. No install, which is nice, because literally all it's doing right now is booting up the game on a server somewhere and then streaming it to me. Going into this, my biggest question is absolutely what is the latency? Now when you're playing on a server that is hundreds of miles away potentially, there's obviously going to be some kind of lag. However, Stadia is actually pretty impressive. So as far as I can tell, I mean, this feels pretty similar to playing like on a standard console. Um, obviously we have really good internet here. That's definitely going to make things a little bit biased, but as far as I'm concerned in this sort of best case scenario, it feels incredibly smooth. Like no dropped frames, no major sort of any issues with the picture quality. 
and latency is not bad. So you're gonna want a minimum of 10 megabit internet to have a solid 720p feed. And if you wanna go full 4K like I'm playing right now, you do wanna aim for at least 35 megabits, which is a lot, but it's also not totally insane, especially considering the quality, really. I mean, like, I can get like up close with it. And yeah, I mean, maybe here I can see a little bit of compression, but realistically, it just looks like I'm playing on a console. This is really, really good. And the picture quality I'm surprised with. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to necessarily match a high-end PC running at 4K. Realistically, it's probably not quite that same level of fidelity. But considering that we're playing a game streaming over the internet, it is not bad. I mean, this is running on Chromecast. We don't have a giant, huge tower underneath the TV. It's literally a Chromecast Ultra, and that's how we're playing Destiny 2 right now. So the next thing we're going to try is playing Stadia using a standard computer running Chrome. So theoretically, it should be pretty straightforward. You just need to go to stadia.google.com and it should theoretically just work. Yeah, so we see Destiny. The wireless function is coming soon and that is a little bit of a downside with Stadia in that there are a lot of cool features that are coming, but they're not quite out yet. So uh, let me plug this guy in. Now there are some upsides to this. So if you are playing on PC, you do get access to using other controllers. You can use a mouse and keyboard. You can plug in like an Xbox controller or something. But for right now, I'm going to plug my Stadia controller in via USB. My first impressions are pretty solid. I do notice a little bit more latency. I think the difference between pl being plugged in wired versus wireless does make a difference. Um, image quality is also not quite as good. We're definitely streaming at 1080p as opposed to 4K. All right, you know what? I will say the controls feel a little bit squishy right now. It's not bad. It's certainly playable, but this is not as smooth of an experience as I would like. Um, it's subtle, and I think it's really only going to be noticeable if you do a lot of native gaming on like a proper console or PC. Like, it's not bad, but it's not quite as seamless as it was using the Chromecast Ultra, which does make sense. I get why they sort of ship this as the bundle. Now Stadia also does work on the Pixel 2, 3, 3a, and 4 right now, as long as they're running Android 10 with more phones to come soon. However, the way to get the controller to work isn't necessarily the most seamless. Okay, you just have to plug it in via USB. Now, to be fair, if you do want to use another controller, say like a PS4 or an Xbox controller, you can connect them via Bluetooth. But right now, I'm gonna play like this. <laughs> you know what? This feels pretty much exactly the same as playing on my laptop. So obviously you've got a smaller screen, which means that the image quality, while it already looked decent before, actually looks a little bit better now because you've got just such a small display to work with. And the, uh, the latency is pretty much exactly the same. I'm pretty convinced that the difference between the laptop and the Pixel versus the Chromecast is purely down to wired versus wireless. This is not the way to play the game though. You should definitely use a Bluetooth controller or ideally fairly shortly when the Stadia controller works wirelessly, it won't be an issue. But this is uh, goofy, I think some might say. When you're thinking in a more mobile context, Stadia is actually really interesting. Now, of course, mobile games are getting better and better, but right now, absolutely nothing can touch the graphics and the gameplay of these full console and PC titles that Stadia provides. Now, is it perfect right now? Absolutely not. Not only do you have to deal with the cable if you want to use the Stadia controller, but it only supports Wi-Fi right now, so you can't use 4G or 5G, which will hopefully make things much better. But realistically, what you're getting here is an experience which, just like on the computer, and it's pretty similar to on the TV, it feels good, it feels snappy, it's not 100% as smooth as playing on like a high-end PC, but it's certainly playable, and especially on a smaller screen, it actually feels totally fine. Oh, oh, no, no, go away, go away, go away, what is that? I've gotta say that I am more impressed with Google Stadia than I thought I'd be. I've tried a lot of cloud gaming services, and there's no doubt that this is the best one yet. Now, it is certainly not perfect. It's a 1.0 version, and there are a lot of features which they are working on. But the most important thing here is the core gameplay and the actual latency and the experience that you get. And everything I've seen here seems to indicate that they've got the fundamentals down. Now, once they get the wireless controller working across all of the devices, once they get more device support, I think it's going to be really impressive. But as of right now, I see the potential. And I think that's the main thing that my sort of takeaway of Stadia is. If you guys are interested, you can definitely feel free to check out the Stadia Premiere Bundle, which is linked in the description. So obviously you don't need all this stuff. Theoretically, you could just wait for Stadia Base to come out next year and you'll be able to play everything for free as well, assuming you buy the games. You can play the subscription for free, but if you want the full experience, if you want the Chromecast Ultra, if you want the controller, this is definitely the way to get it.